Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. As promised in my last video, I wanted to show off each of my characters and the refined builds that I've been working on since the last patch. In this video, I will showcase their strengths within the Damnation mission and go over the full build along with its utilization. First off, I want to start by saying that this is my own preference. If you enjoy using a specific weapon more than I use, then please experiment and give me a little bit of feedback in the comments section below. This is personally what I enjoyed using for my build, and it's what works for my playstyle. That all aside, I really hope you enjoy the content that I plan on pushing out throughout this week. I'm going to be going over each class and my preferred build, but today I'm going to be starting with the Veteran. He was by far the easiest of my classes to set up in a sense of getting all the right weapons and all the right blessings. I made him with the intention to focus as a supportive sniper for the entire team. Your job is simple. All your real goal is with this build is to identify key threats and eliminate them from a distance. The build I went with was a Recon Last Sniper. With this build, your main focus is less on horde clearing and more so on specialist, elite, and monstrosity management. You can tear through any big threat with your sniper, and you can protect yourself if the horde pushes up with your power sword. But you are an absolute unit when it comes to dealing high damage to special enemies. Using the Lucius Mark III Hellbore Las Gun, you want the perks to be aligned with having a focus on maniacs and unyielding enemies. You'll want at least 20% on both. I was able to get a blessing that I wanted, so I was able to increase one of my perks to max. Personally, I felt like this class excelled most with monstrosities, so I opted in for max damage to unyielding enemies. This matters because of our blessings. Surgical is awesome with this build, because it would keep your ammo and your crits up the entire time you aim down sights. This also works in hand with Onslaught because of your charge time reduction, meaning that you can spray multiple shots in succession while protecting your team and keeping the engagement limited to clearing out just the horde. Like I said before though, your main role in your strike team is focusing the bigger threats posed to everyone, making everyone else's job much easier. However, if you've played enough Darktide, you'll have encountered the occasional squad wipe. Hordes come in many different sizes in Damnation, but I really have an issue with this build. For my melee weapon, I went with the Munitorum Mark III Power Sword as it provides an attack chain off of purely wide swings. This moveset works best with Power Cycler and Rampage. Upon charging your special, you'll have an extra energized hit, and you'll be able to slice through multiple horde enemies. Hitting at least three enemies within the horde will proc Rampage, giving you even more damage. This of course is easy enough on horde enemies without perk bonuses, so I opted in for using this towards Flak and Carapace armored enemies, since they usually can't be weakened by a normal swing. This allows for more use during dire moments of mob clearing when you don't have your sniper readily available. The Curios are mostly comprised of my own personal preference. The main blessing on them should be fixed towards your playstyle, so I lean towards max health and max toughness over wounds and stamina because I personally find myself not needing those. However, resistance towards specialists and corruption could definitely be a main focus for you, but again, this boils down to where you find yourself needing it most. I tend to have more issues with packs of gunners, snipers, and bombers, so I freely go between having at least 15-20% to resistance on those specific specialists. Those are all the main items, blessings, and useful perks for each piece of equipment needed to make this build work. But now I want to show you off the talent tree and what each choice does in the field. First off, let's talk about the main ability for the Veteran. I chose Executioner's Stance, which is an augmented version of the Veteran's previous ability called Volley Fire. With this ability, all elite and specialist enemies are highlighted for 5 seconds, allowing you to notice the threats much quicker, and it gives you enough time to eliminate these targets easily. With this stance, we gain 25% range damage and 25% range weak spot damage, and the spread and recoil are greatly reduced. The two active ability modifiers I like to use with this build are Marksman, which activates the second you use your main ability. In this time, for 10 seconds, any weak spot hit gains a 50% power boost. This is most noticeable when hitting crits on any of the bosses, and using this with Relentless allows you to utilize your main ability by keeping it refreshed upon killing every outlined enemy. Since you only have 5 seconds of Executioner Stance, you can shoot one target that's outlined and recycle all 5 seconds right back into your main ability, so keeping shots consistently on point is key here. I like to preserve my Shredder Grenades for emergencies like when a teammate goes down or the Horde becomes a bigger problem to manage. Since Bleed Ticks are pretty useful across the board against most enemies, this helps mitigate any overwhelming threats pretty quickly. Survivalist is the aura perk that I chose because it gives ammo to myself and my team. You really won't need much ammo, but like I said, I built this class to support my entire team. The new passives are incredible with this build, so I'm going to briefly go over what I chose and why it's useful. The passive Always Prepare grants you 25% more ammo. Since you won't really ever need to pick up ammo during your mission, it's a nice way of allowing your team to prioritize themselves first. 
Next, I use the passive called Bring It Down, which gives you 25% more damage towards Ogrins and Monstrosities. This is your main passive for boss type enemies. Catcher Breath is great for snipers since your main focus is supporting your team from a distance. This allows you to recover any missing toughness over time at a much quicker rate, as long as there aren't any enemies in the vicinity. Close Order Drill is a great supportive passive. It gives everyone within coherency up to a 33% toughness damage reduction. Pretty much anything on Malice or lower, you'll rarely drop all of your toughness with this perk, but on Heresy and Damnation, your team will thank you since everything hits way harder. Confirmed Kill replenishes 25% toughness on Elite and Specialist kills, and a further 25% toughness over 10 seconds. Determined is a passive that grants you Suppression Immunity. This allows you to be able to control your recoil a bit better when you're getting targeted, and this is pretty much needed especially if you plan on sniping since shots on target matter. The passive called Exhilarating Takedown replenishes 15% of your toughness, and you also gain a 10% toughness damage reduction for 8 seconds on any ranged weak spot kills. This can also be stacked 3 times, and goes hand in hand with our main ability, so remember to aim for the head whenever you can. Killzone gives you 15% ranged base damage when no enemies are around you within an 8 meter radius. Again, as a sniper, seek a vantage point and clear the area for your team. Longshot gives you an additional 20% range base damage, however, you have a reduced bonus depending on how close you are to your target, so keep your distance. The passive Precision Strikes grants you even more weak spot damage. The greatest passive perk there is for any veteran that's a LAS gun enjoyer has to be Shock Trooper. Any critical hits with any LAS gun now consumes no ammo. This is why Surgical is highly recommended as a blessing with this build because you can build stacks of crit chance and getting to 100% allows you to never waste a single shot. The Tactical Awareness passive gives you a combat ability cooldown by 6 seconds on each specialist killed. So after Executioner Stance ends, continue looking for specialists. Tag them to give yourself a greater chance of hitting a headshot and watch the cooldown work its magic. And the final passive in our build is called Volley Adept, which is a 30% buff to our reload speed on any elite and specialist killed. Throughout the talent tree there are nodes that you can choose for your modifiers, however the ones that I went with are boost to my health, range damage, reload speed, toughness, and toughness damage reduction. This is all I wanted for my build and these all work quite well with the synergy around my weapons and abilities. I'm rarely ever bored whenever I play this class because of how useful I am on the strike team. I'm constantly able to use my abilities and I freely update my team on what's ahead because executioner stance allows you to even see through walls. If you struggle with damnation at all, this might be a build that you should invest in. The gear needed shouldn't take long at all to get, the only real RNG you need is getting the right blessings. But because of the recent rework, you really only need tier 3 blessings at the least. I really hope I got the chance to help out any veteran players out there, and if you guys have any suggestions or feedback, please don't be afraid to share them in the comments below. Again, I plan on releasing a build for each of the classes this week, so please stay tuned if you're interested, and please don't forget to subscribe to see more. Anyways, I'm going to leave you with the rest of the match so you can see how I play this build with a group of randoms. My name is Zen, and I'll catch you in the next one. Enjoy!
the end. Before he dies. <laughs> 